This video is under the protection of the Fair Use Act. Hi, I'm Nathan. I'm an autistic MB adult dog collector who makes doll videos for other collectors like myself. And today we're talking again about Monster High Generation 3 and analyzing the non-binary representation, Frankie Stein. In G3, Frankie identifies as non-binary and uses they, them pronouns as opposed to she, her in Generation 1. They are also played by a non-binary actor named Cece Bellicote in the live action, and is voiced by Iris Minas in the animated series. And Iris Minas identifies as trans non-binary. To start, I want to say that I myself am non-binary. Many of you may not know that because unfortunately my voice sounds very feminine and it's something I feel very insecure about, but I do indeed identify as non-binary, specifically as a demi-boy, which means I use he-they pronouns, and the demi-boy category does fall under the non-binary umbrella terms. This is why it means a lot to me to have more non-binary representation in media, especially within dolls. And with G3 focused more on inclusivity, I think it's only fair to analyze their vision of a non-binary character and offer my thoughts. I will be discussing what it means to identify as non-binary, how to represent a non-binary character in media, Frankie's role in acting in the movie, and Frankie's designs. So, before we analyze a non-binary character in media, let's discuss the topic of identifying as non-binary and how to represent non-binary characters in media. If you already know about the non-binary experience and just want to hear my thoughts on Frankie, I will put a time skip in the description to my Frankie discussion. According to the Grand Rapids Pride Center website, the non-binary flag was created in 2014 by Kai Rowan. The flag consists of four horizontal stripes of yellow, white, purple, and black. On the flag, yellow is symbolic of a person's gender identifying outside of the binary, binary meaning male or female. White is symbolic of identifying as all or multiple genders. Purple represents identifying with a mixed gender of male and female. And black symbolizes identifying with having no gender at all. All of these colors come together on this flag to symbolize many different non-binary experiences. This shows that being non-binary essentially falls on a spectrum and there's no wrong way to identify as non-binary, which is why I love being non-binary. I can be anything I want without feeling like I have to stay to the rules. In my own experience, I feel like I identify more with the yellow side of the flag, but other days, I feel like I identify more with the white symbolism of the flag. Non-binary is also an umbrella, meaning that it holds room for a broad spectrum of different gender experiences. Demi-boy, gender fluid, gender flux, and many more terms can all be drawn back to the non-binary experiences. They just have more specific categories. You can identify as he, they, she, they, or even change your pronouns daily and still identify as non-binary. Before anything, I'll discuss why representation is important. Representation in media is defined as the way aspects of society, such as gender, age, or ethnicity, are presented to audiences, according to Holly Green from Medium.com. Representation in media is important because all types of people and their experiences deserve to be shown. Because in the real world, our reality is full of diverse experiences and our media should reflect that. Representation done correctly is important because it builds confidence in those represented, makes those represented feel like they could do anything in the world, and overall just gives a person's experience and themselves a chance to be seen, which can really make a huge difference in their whole life. Over the years, more companies have made effort to put non-binary characters in media. One example of this is from the Disney movie Zombies that has a non-binary alien character who is also bisexual. This character is Aspen, and they are played by Terry Hu. Terry themselves also identifies as non-binary. Aspen is an alien with short blue hair. Other characters actively use the pronoun to they them in the movie and Aspen is shown having attraction to both male and female characters, which means they can also identify as bisexual. Bisexual is the orientation of being attracted to both men and women. I only saw bits of the movie through reviews and I still really enjoy Terry's performance. It's clear that they are a very talented actor. Aspen even has their own doll, which is really cool because it actually might be the first non-binary doll to record. And in an interview conducted by them.us, Terry stated that while acting for their character, something I loved about playing Aspen is that while they're non-binary, it's not the focal point of their identity. I think there's definitely a time and a place where there needs to be stories that revolve around the specific struggles of being part of a minority group, but I really appreciate how with this part, Aspen's being non-binary is totally normal. 
Espen is a great character with a passionate and talented actor, though there was still only one non-binary character in the whole franchise, and they literally appeared in the last movie. This transitions to the issues with how writers portray the non-binary experience and how non-binary characters aren't really written enough in media. Non-binary representation is difficult to show in media, but not because the non-binary experience is difficult to write. It mostly comes down to corporations assuming only one non-binary character is enough to represent the whole experience which would be unrealistic. It's very similar to autistic representation. Autism is a spectrum. Every autistic person is different. Two people can identify as non-binary and can have completely different non-binary experiences. You can't have only one non-binary character from that group to represent non-binary people as every NB experience is different. Even if an actor is very skilled at being a non-binary character, they can't portray all of that community, and that is the writer's fault. Like with autistic rep, non-binary rep is best shown with more than one character. Well, on the topic of how to rep, here's a few good guidelines I think companies should follow when making non-binary characters. First, to add more than one character. Don't just have a single non-binary character. Try to have multiple that identify with different areas of the non-binary umbrella. And note that having only one character that specifically identifies with the general non-binary concept can kind of only seem like a publicity act. Next, don't make the entire character's personality revolve around being a non-binary rep. Like Terry mentioned earlier, that could be okay if the character's whole arc is about them learning about their identity, but even then, try to make sure the character still has other interests, goals, and a personality outside of just being a non-binary character. And most importantly, research non-binary experiences and hire writers and actors to portray and write those experiences. Nobody else has a better experience than those who are being represented. With those rules clarified, let's analyze Frankie. I'm gonna analyze the parts of the show that we know of, mainly the movie and Frankie's overall designs. But just a quick content warning, if you plan to watch the movie yourself, please note that in the beginning parts of the movie, Frankie wears a yellow plaid jacket with a black and white vest. The vest has a pattern of columns of black and white stripes going alternate directions. The vest doesn't take up the whole screen, but it is still noticeable in many scenes. I have censored the vest and made it the same color in my own recording because I do worry that that pattern could trigger photosensitive epilepsy. There is also another part in the movie where they wear a black and white striped long sleeve shirt, which I've also censored. The black and white stripes are much larger, but are still very noticeable. I do not suffer from epilepsy myself, however I do worry that these patterns could trigger photosensitive epilepsy. So if you yourself experience photosensitive epilepsy and black and white striped patterns can trigger a seizure for you, then please be careful when watching the movie. Also, overall in the movie, and especially in the movie's advertising, I noticed a lot of sudden flashing moments which could also trigger a photosensitive epilepsy seizure. There's also no warnings for these flashes or potential pattern triggers. And I'm actually considering making a whole video about just the epilepsy triggers, so if you yourself experience photosensitive epilepsy, then I would love to hear your thoughts on that. But anyway, back to Frankie's role in the movie. Monster High the movie focuses on Claudine as the main protagonist. Frankie is one of Claudine's friends and is also a main character. Frankie has long white and black hair, wears makeup like lipstick and mascara, and wears a variety of outfits throughout the movie. On the topic of Frankie's outfit choices, Cece Bellagot, the actor of Frankie, states that Also, we have the same style, pretty much. I wear a lot of black and a lot of chains with pops of color, and I express my gender in lots of ways, just like Frankie does. This is something I myself was a bit unsure of, as I myself like to present more masculine androgynous stuff, but the more I thought about it, the more I appreciate seeing more feminine presenting non-binary people in media. Obviously, Frankie isn't entirely feminine presenting non-binary, like Cece mentioned. They like to present their gender in a lot of different ways, but I do think they are more feminine presenting so than other NB reps. Frankie has a very outgoing personality and is curious about everything around them, always making random questions or bringing up random facts. They are very smart and always do well in class. They are presented as a kind friend who accepts others and always wants to learn new things. They also make a lot of jokes and are more of a comedic relief in the movie, but are still allowed their own individual moments to talk about their experience with difficulty socializing and not fitting in. Frankie even outwardly states that they are non-binary and use they them pronouns which is huge, as usually non-binary rep in movies like this is only just other characters using they them pronouns for non-binary characters without stating that they are actually NB. This is probably the first movie I've ever seen where a character is outwardly non-binary. 
Frankie's non-binary actor, Cece, who goes by he, they, did an excellent job about making Frankie present like an amazing friend, and they did excellent acting as many interactions Frankie had with other characters felt like natural conversations. Claudine is the main protagonist of the movie, so she is the main focus, meaning Frankie's rep is more of casual rep. Casual representation meaning representation that is just a normal part of existence like something you'd see in real life. Frankie's pronouns are respected and used as normal and their non-binaryness is just a fact about them instead of the plot of the movie. Overall, Frankie is presented as smart, kind, and hilarious. They are shown to be proud of their identity and display how to state and use they-them pronouns. They also have flaws and discuss how they feel nervous when they don't know how friendship works. Their character does feel a bit one-dimensional at some point, and there were some moments where I wish they had a bit more personality other than I'm smart and I'm also the comedic relief, but that is likely due to the fact that there aren't more non-binary characters in the movie to balance out the expectation of a very, very good non-binary rep. They're good on their own, and I think if there were other characters that were also non-binary, I would think their act is better, but as a standalone non-binary character, it kind of does feel like they're just used as the joke. I don't by any means say this to criticize Cece, I'm just more judging the writer's intentions of how they just kind of put Frankie on the sidelines. And it's not like they're not funny, I just kind of wish there was a bit more to them, or there were just other non-binary characters that could have a bit more depth to them. Well, on the topic of the movie, I think we should talk about the Pride Celebration video made by Nickelodeon. Before the release of the movie, Nickelodeon made a video about celebrating Pride with Frankie, or rather Frankie's NB actor, Cece Balagot. In the video, Cece meets with Conrad Rocha, a TikTok dancer, and they both discuss gender identity. Cece states that they have he-they pronouns, and Conrad states that he has he-him his pronouns and identifies as gay. Conrad talks about how dancing helped him embrace his identity, and both of them spend time learning one of Conrad's dance routines. Then they talk about Cece's experience with gender identity, and he states that, I mean, my goal in life is to be the person that I needed to see on TV. Which is just such a nice and meaningful thing to hear, and it really shows how much Cece cares about non-binary representation. Cece also wanted casual rep instead of tokenism, which I absolutely agree with. For the most part, the video felt very real. It felt like two humans interacting who were free to discuss their identity rather than an advertisement. As a gay dude, I am pretty defensive when it comes to media representing LGBTQIA people. This is because usually companies, especially very famous companies like Nickelodeon, only care about rep because it gives them media publicity and money. This is sad but realistic to capitalism and marketing, which is why I could be a bit hesitant when corporations want to represent people like me. But Nickelodeon has also been trying to make these Pride Celebration videos for a long time and based on the terms they're using like celebrate and also letting the actors talk about tokenism, like wow. They're not exactly perfect, but I do see them making steps in the right direction. There are some things that still make me a bit hesitant about their intentions, such as Frankie being the only non-binary character, but I'll talk about that later. Next, let's discuss the animated series. Soon, or at the time of making this script at least, Monster High will also be launching a 3D animated series. There aren't really any episodes as it hasn't been fully released, so this will just be a quick discussion of the episode Food Fight. Also, I just want to say in the first literal seconds of the preview, there are black to image flashes with no warning. Here, I slowed the video down and took screenshots of each of the flashes and laid them out in order. Though this may not look bad, these flashes literally play within 2 seconds. Even though it's not really much of a contrast as opposed to black and white flashing, it can still be very sudden and unexpected, especially because there's no warnings. Which, according to the Game Accessibility Guidelines website, could actually cause a seizure. According to these guidelines, photosensitive epilepsy can, in this case, be triggered by a sequence of flashing images that last for more than 6 seconds, more than 3 flashes in a single second, covering 25% of the screen. Flashing is defined by an instantaneous high change in brightness or contrast, including fast cuts. I counted around 3-4 to four flashes of black to the image in a single second, which violates the more than 3 flashes in a single second rule. It isn't necessarily bright or contrasting, but, like I said, could be shocking if not expecting it. This type of flashing style is also heavily present in the live-action trailer as mentioned earlier. These flashes are completely unnecessary, and there is no warning whatsoever for them. I know this is off-topic, but since this new generation of Monster High is intended to be focused on inclusivity, you would think they'd include a fucking seizure warning in their content. But of course, like I mentioned, I don't myself have epilepsy, and all the things I'm basing my research on are off of websites on epilepsy.
If you yourself suffer from photosensitive epilepsy and find that I'm wrong, then just please let me know. I'm open to learning a lot of things about epilepsy, and all I know is that most companies do not try to put epilepsy warnings, and I'm just trying to make sure that media is inclusive and safe for everyone. Anyway, in the episode- ARE YOU KIDDING ME? At 808 in the YouTube video, there's a sudden flash of lightning that flashes three times within two seconds, and there's no warning. God fucking damn it. I really am about to make an entire video about the lack of epilepsy warning in this whole generation's advertising. But anyway, in this episode, Draculaura is the main focus. Frankie and Claudine are also friends in this universe and are main characters, and it seems like each episode will have a different character as the main focus. Also, to recap from earlier, Frankie's voice actor is Iris Minas who identifies as trans non-binary and Z uses Z here pronouns. In the episode, Draculaura seems to be having conflict with her father, Dracula. At lunch, she practices magic and accidentally brings her food to life. She is unable to reverse the spell and the food escapes into the school. Dracula is going to visit the school by the end of the day and Draculaura has to get rid of the food before her dad arrives, lest he find out that she casts magic spells. Because all the things in the life action were apparently reversed and it's just a completely separate reality, I, I don't- I don't know what they're going with this story thing, but oh, okay. Anyway, hijinks happen, Frankie has a lab of bionic stuff, and they're at least able to stop the food and, and pin the blame on Claudine's human side so Draculaura doesn't get kicked out of school. Draculaura is unable to tell her dad that she's a witch, but her friends still support her and give her a secret witchcraft lab. In this episode, Frankie is still a comedic, really funny character, but they're also still smart and are able to remember things like law loopholes from their lawyer brain or school rule facts. They also have lightning superpowers and a secret lab with bionic limbs. They also don't talk about their pronouns or identity at all in this episode. Actually, I don't even think Frankie's pronouns are even used in this episode, but that also could just be because no one was referring to Frankie and all the main characters were just talking to each other instead of about each other, so pronouns wouldn't have been used in the first place. Overall, I like Frankie's presentation in the show. It does at times feel like they are a very simplified version of the live-action version that just doesn't have as good written dialogue, and the fact that they have powers and are smart, that kind of makes them feel a bit overpowered. Obviously not like Frankie can't have powers and hyperintelligence, but they don't really have any flaws to balance it, other than being the comedic relief. While making rep, it's important to make sure that your reps aren't flawless gods that are good at everything, because that's not very realistic to actual non-binary struggles. And it can put those being represented on an impossible pedestal that they cannot meet. Though flawless people may seem cool, they're not really something to look up to. People have flaws, and that's okay. That's only human, and that deserves to be seen, too. I just wish Frankie had a bit more human flaws and was able to talk more about their identity, but again, this is just the first episode, and we'll have to see where they go with, with Frankie's depth and overall character exploration. Anyway, that's my thoughts on Frankie's presentation in this show so far. Of course, I can't say much because of how there's literally no other episodes, but I think it has a great start. Next up is the music video. To advertise the dolls, Mattel has posted a few music videos on the Monster High YouTube channel featuring the characters singing a song about themselves. Frankie even has their own video called Sparked to Life. In this video, Frankie sings about the confusion of living for only 15 days, also the pride of their existence. Sitting there are unique and pieced together from new and old parts. They even get a line, albeit one line, about their pronouns that states, it's they for me, not he or she, cause labels ain't a thing for me. Which may imply that this version of Frankie, and perhaps the other versions of Frankie, do not identify with the binary genders of male or female, and it feels like the writers are trying to portray the black or yellow sides of the non-binary flag's meaning. The music video overall is very cute and focuses on Frankie being prideful of their identity. They even use words like unique and work of art to describe Frankie's existence, which is a very positive message for other NBs. Now I'm going to talk about Frankie's design. I wanted to talk about Frankie's design separately from their character personality as I feel like their design has a lot of topics to discuss. Firstly, let's discuss their overall design. Though I will mention their animated counterparts, I will also be talking about the doll since this is the most prevalent part of the character. Firstly, let's discuss their overall design. Frankie now, well, is blue. In their original design, Frankie was green. 
The original green fit the Frankenstein narrative better, and in all honesty, Frankie's current shade of blue skin kind of feels like it just blends into their design without making them look very visually interesting. I understand the reason their skin was changed is so they could avoid copyright issues with Frankenstein, but still, I feel like this shade of blue was just not a right color, and I feel like Frankie's design would have worked better if they had a greenish blue skin color. Frankie still keeps their long black and white hair, and their movie and some doll counterparts still have the side of their head shaved or braided. Frankie's doll and show counterparts also have a prosthetic left leg, which I thought was amazing, but also kind of confusing since the live action actor doesn't have a prosthetic leg, but the live action version of Frankie and the show version look exactly the same, so I'm just kind of confused, like wh why couldn't they just have found an NB actor that also has the prosthetic left leg for the live action? But back to the doll, Frankie's face sculpt has a more square and masculine jaw, at least compared to the other doll's faces. Which I think definitely adds some nice androgyny to the mix. Frankie also wears makeup, earrings, and has a bit more feminine leaning associated clothes for these specific dolls so far. Also when I say feminine leaning, that doesn't necessarily mean Frankie is female or that their clothes make them feminine by any means. I try and see feminine associated because I myself see clothes as either masculine, feminist, or androgynous, in my own experience of course, and all I notice is that when I wear more masculine or androgynous outfits, I feel much more comfortable, but of course that only reflects my own experience. Also, clothes obviously don't have a specific gender, and makeup and earrings do not inherently mean feminine. I think their doll design, for the most part, is overall very good. I personally put a preferred less bright neon blues and pinks, as it looks a bit cheap on the doll, but that's about it. However, that being said, there is a small thing I found a bit odd about the first wave doll, and I, and I am NOT trying to say that the designers at all intended this. I understand this was likely just a coincidence. But I almost feel like Frankie's doll design is more representative of the transgender flag instead of the non-binary flag. Please allow me to explain what I mean by this. This is the transgender flag. The trans flag was designed by Monica Helms, a trans woman, in 1999. The transgender flag's symbolism is that blue represents the male gender, pink represents female gender, and white represents those who are transitioning, identify with having no gender, or identify as intersex. Now, I couldn't find an official source that stated this, but I've always heard that the pink to blue at the top represents trans women, and the pink to blue at the bottom represents trans men. I noticed that Frankie's main outfit and accessory colors are blue and pink. One of the most noticeable things is their basic released vest. It is black with some white stitch marks. On top of their vest, there are two thin lines pointing down like an arrow. The top stripe is blue, and the bottom stripe is pink. There are also two straight lines on the bottom of the vest that are also blue to pink. The arrow especially makes this look like they are representing a male to female transition based on the trans flag. If I did not know who this character was at all and someone just told me this character was LGBTQ rep, with the more feminine outfit appearance and literal arrow of blue to pink stripes, I would honestly think that this character was intended to be a trans female. <laughs> Okay, 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 now the trans flag obviously didn't invent the color combination of blue and pink, and I doubt that was the designer's intent to make it look like the outfit was based off the trans flag. All I wish is that the designers were more aware of LGBTQ flags, their color patterns, and their meaning since this is supposed to be LGBTQ rep. Even in casual representation, you should know what you're making representation about. There absolutely do need to be more trans dolls and characters in media, and it's not like Frankie can't be trans or can't be someone's idea of trans rep, but this is intended to be a canonically non-binary caricature. If they wanted to pay tribute to the voice actor's trans non-binary experience, then why not just make this version of Frankie canonically trans non-binary? If the designers did want this to be a trans character, I would have much more appreciated if they state that this is a trans character instead of a non-binary character. It's not fair to either party to hide intended rep by just using different rep, if that were the designer's thoughts at least. I personally would have preferred if the designers researched the non-binary flag and decided to include more of that flag's colors. They already have black and white on Frankie's color palette. Why can't the shoes be a bit darker of a purple and why can't the vomit green lightning bolts be yellow, for example? There's obviously no rule that an LGBTQ character has to wear the colors of their flag, 
but when a character has a few aspects of their design that people might read as one minority when they're supposed to represent another, it might be a good idea just to think about flag research. Especially when a character is supposed to represent a non-binary person who is... Not he or she. Now that I've talked about everything specifically, I'm going to discuss my closing thoughts. First, I'm going to talk about what I like overall. First, what I like about everything is that Frankie's representation is casual. They are able to state their pronouns and others respect them. However, being non-binary is not their only factor. They are also smart and funny as well as a good friend. While there were some moments where they felt one-dimensional and they felt like too much of the butt of the joke, I think overall they're pretty funny. And while referencing the rules, I do like how Frankie's entire personality wasn't about them being non-binary. It was a bit, but it was actually kind of more about them discovering things about themselves as their character is literally 15 days old. They are also pretty smart and definitely have other interests other than learning about their environment. I also think there was great success in researching NB experiences at least because there's two different non-binary actors, one of which was allowed to talk publicly about their experience on Nickelodeon's channel. Despite some of the negative comments I made, I think overall they are a very cute, cool, non-binary representation and they are absolutely a step in the right direction. But now that I stated everything that I do like, I think it's only fair to talk about everything I disliked overall. I of course earlier mentioned some of the specific things I disliked, such as Frankie being more of the joke and their design looking more like it was based off of the trans flag instead of the non-binary flag. But I think what I found upsetting most of all is that they're the only non-binary character in the entire franchise. Now look, I absolutely don't mean to criticize Iris or CC when I say these things. If anything, I'm criticizing the writers. Now, I don't know the writers' individual experiences or opinions, and I'm not trying to assume things of them by making this claim. This is just how I am perceiving their actions, but there's part of me that feels like Frankie's non-binary-ness is just being used for publicity. I mean, the fact that they openly state that they're non-binary and use they-them pronouns seem to mention aspects of the non-binary experience and have a non-binary actor that has their own pride celebration video does show that at least someone on Nickelodeon seems to care, but... But speaking realistically, in terms of corporate entities, good intent or greed, they do technically get a financial benefit of having only one LGBTQ character. In 2022, inclusivity in corporations pays the bills. It's easier to have only one non-binary character that can be brought out for media publicity as opposed to a group of non-binary reps. It is a sad but true fact that the world, or at least fucking corporate America, revolves around money and staying in financial strength. So if Mattel's and Nickelodeon's intent was money, then that would make logical sense, but this strategy is unfortunate for the minorities who need to be seen in media for themselves, not a cash grab. Frankie's overall portrayal, like I mentioned, is definitely nice, but it also feels like it was engineered to be popular in some ways, and honestly, the only way I personally can know if the writers really care about non-binary representation is if they added more than Frankie, add a character that represents the purple and white side of the non-binary flag's meaning, or have a demigirl or gender flux character. Because like I mentioned earlier, being non-binary is a spectrum. Any two non-binary people will have different ways they identify with being non-binary, no matter how good or talented your single NB actor or character is, they will not portray the full spectrum of being non-binary. And that's not the actor's fault, that is the writer's fault for not including more than one NB experience. Because if you really care about NB rep, then you should know better than to stop at just one character. So until Monster High's writers start adding more than one non-binary character, I will doubt that they have more intentions than getting money from Frankie. I don't mean to insult the writers or the actors, but like I mentioned before, I am cautious when it comes to big companies making representation. Because usually, they don't have their consumers' best interests at heart. Whoa, what's that? That's a burrito, Frankie. Cool! So, that's my views on G3 Frankie as a non-binary person. If you are also NB or under the NB umbrella term category, what did you think of Frankie? Did you feel represented by them? Whatever your thoughts may be, you are welcome to share your opinions in the comments below, though any comments that are homophobic, racist, or any way just kind of offensive or rude will be removed. I at least hope you enjoyed the video, but it's fine if you didn't. Let me know if you want to see me discuss more about Monster High G3 or just other NB stuff. I'll see you in the next video.